this might come as a surprise, but the job of a mathematician is not necessarily to study numbers so much as it is to study structures. In other words, mathematicians need to have the ability to look past differences that don't matter to be able to see the differences that do. For example, suppose I take these two groups. The group on the left, G, its elements are complex numbers. 1, negative 1, I, minus I. Um, its operation is multiplication of complex numbers. So for example, I times I gives me negative 1. So here's a Cayley table for that group, whose objects are complex numbers. On the right here is a different looking group. Its objects are 2 by 2 matrices. Uh, its operation is matrix multiplication. And for example, this matrix multiplied by itself gives me that matrix. So these are two very different looking algebraic structures. The question that we want to ask though is, is it possible that those differences are purely cosmetic? If we look past the differences in the nature of the elements and the type of the operation, is the underlying structure nevertheless the same? That's right, in this video we finally get to define a term that I've been cagely avoiding defining all semester. What does it mean for two groups to be the same? From an abstract algebra standpoint, because from a layperson's standpoint, G and H are very different. Their elements are different, their operation is very different, and so we might expect that these two groups are not, in fact, the same. But when we take a closer look, in each of these groups, one of these elements acts like an identity. When we multiply it by any other element, we get that same thing back. It happens to also occupy the same places in this Cayley table. So if we sort of squint the complex number 1 and this identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, they seem algebraically like they do the same kind of things. They play the same role within their group. The same thing is true of the element negative 1 and of this opposite identity matrix over here on the right-hand side. They occupy the same places in the respective Cayley tables, and so we expect that they seem like they act like one another. Same thing with I, perhaps surprisingly, the complex number I and this 2 by 2 matrix also occupy the same places. They play the same role in their respective Cayley tables. And then finally, the same is true of this last element. So if we take a step back from these two Cayley tables and sort of squint, what we're seeing is that while the elements look very different, the way that they behave, the way that they interact with the other elements in their group is identical. It's analogous. If we color code both of these tables, the color codes that we're using are exactly the same. And it's a famous quote from Henri Poincaré, the 19th century French mathematician, that it's the job of mathematics. Mathematics is the art of giving the same name to different things. When we first encounter these two groups, it would seem that they're different because of the differences in their elements, the differences in their operation. But when we take a step back and find out that the underlying structure is the same, we want to be able to give that same name to these two groups and be able to say, for example, these are both cyclic groups of order 4, which, though we haven't proven it yet, uniquely characterizes both of these groups from an abstract standpoint. These two structures are, in fact, the same, even though their arguments, their elements, their, uh, their operations look very different. So this is a difference that ultimately from an abstract algebra standpoint, we want not to care about. So why we care about telling when two things are the same in abstract algebra is if we don't know what's the same, then we're going to miss the differences that do matter. If there really was a difference in the algebraic structure of these two groups, we would want to be able to tell that. But if there's not, as there isn't here, then we need to be able to say that as well. So a key part in being able to tell the difference between two things is being able to know when two things are the same. And that's what this series of videos are about. The notion of an isomorphism in abstract algebra is a comparison between two groups, and a comparison in particular that shows that two groups have the same structure. So how does it work? What are our goals? First of all, we want to talk about how to define an isomorphism between two groups, guided by this desire to show that those two groups are in fact the same. So in other words, if I want to conclude that the group G is the same as the group H, what kind of mathematical object do I need to show exists, or do I need to construct in order to establish that sameness? But it turns out that the kind of object that an isomorphism is going to be is it's going to be a function. Functions are classically a tool that we can use to study similarities and differences between sets. All we have to do is soup that up a little bit to incorporate the operation in a group in addition to the set of its elements, and we get isomorphism, which is a particular type of function 
from the set of objects in G to the set of objects in H. Our second goal will then be to verify the sameness properties of isomorphisms. First, by verifying that isomorphism between two groups associates to elements in the first group, elements in the second group that act exactly the same as the elements in the first group do. So the properties of elements under an isomorphism are preserved. For example, to show that the element here, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, has all the same properties within its group that the element i had within its group over here on the left. But we want more to be true than just that. We don't just want the properties of every element in these groups to be the same under an isomorphism. We further want to verify that the properties of entire collections of elements within those groups, specifically subgroups, in addition to the whole group itself, that the properties that attach to those collections of elements are also the same across an isomorphism. So isomorphisms don't just tell me things about sameness of elements, they also tell me something about sameness of groups and subgroups. And then finally, we also want to be able to study the very interesting question of in what ways can a group be isomorphic to itself? Of course, I think we can all agree that every group is going to be the same as itself in a particular sense. But there may be more than one way in which a group can be similar to the same to itself. And those different ways, self-isomorphisms, or what we're going to call automorphisms of a group, are not only a, an interesting way to study a group in its own, but the set of automorphisms of a group is actually also another group in its own right. And we want to be able to at least get a taste of how to study the properties of the automorphism group of a group. That not only has important ramifications in group theory, but the further up you go into abstract algebra, you begin to study rings, fields, polynomials, and Galois theory, which if you're interested, I have a whole series of YouTube videos on that. That automorphism groups really power that study of Galois theory, which tells me something about the roots of polynomial equations. So automorphisms are a big deal. We're just going to get an initial taste in this series of videos. So let's get cracking. What does it really mean on a concrete setting to be able to say that two groups are, in fact, the same? What is an isomorphism, and how do we define it?